Yeah. But anyway, if you guys think I'm the hardest working, uh, if you think I am the James Brown of Firearms you Stock Radio, the hardest person, you can vote for working. me at Juxy.com. That's funny. You can vote at uh, Juxy.com. Go there and vote for me as the hardest working man in firearms radio. Now, we've got a Brownells bullet points for you here. And it's brought to you by these folks uh, in Grinnell, Iowa, called Brownells. What? I'm going to go in. Uh, I was on Brownells' website, and they have a Brownells. Uh, it is the. Uh, it's an LPVO. Now. I'm I'm kind of I'm I've gotten a, a newfound respect for LPVOs, b- based on uh, our buddy Ken Valier showing up with one. It's a li- loser person that's very <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> the objective. LPV, a low power variable optic. You see these. This was a creation. This was something that the Army decided about ten years ago that they had to have. They had to have them, and so. Scope manufacturers are like, well, okay, if you have to have it, I guess we'll build it for you. But it's going to cost a lot of money. <laughs> and the government laughed at me like, well, that's what we have is a lot of money. Well, where did you get it? We stole it from the people. And even if we run out, we'll just ask the, ask the Federal Reserve to make more, and then we'll just make more. <laughs> It's like it's gonna cost a lot of money. <laughs> oh, that's me laughing in Pentagon. So anyway, uh, they have Brownells has in stock right now an LPVO. It's a one to six, and it's actually a really good price. It's four hundred thirty nine dollars. Uh, it's a one. It's a mil uh, a mil adjustment. It's a point one mil click uh, adjustment, and if you have sk- Skill. Now, see, here's the thing that concerns me. What is this thing called? It, it's it, it. Yep, this is what concerns me. So, it's the low par. Uh, it, it's on their. It's the. It's on their homepage. If you go to the homepage, it's the first. It's that. It's that. The problem with LPVOs is not really the power. But this says MPO. My mind is blown. Okay, yeah, match precision optics. That's their line. But the, the LPVO is the generic. Okay. Yeah, so if you uh, if you go to brownells.com, there's a link directly in the show notes to go to this. Yeah. But if you go to Brownells and you're looking for the the acronym LPVO on the picture, you're not going to see it. Oh, yeah. I, I apologize. And, and and I actually, a few years ago, someone was like, what do you think about LPVOs? And I was like, I don't, th- I don't think anything about them. It because, comes with donuts. Yeah, it comes with donuts. Uh because what is that? And they're like, oh, the low power variable optics. I'm like, oh, because when they first came out with the one by sixes and the one by eights, that's just what it was. And then the internet had to come up with a cool acronym because oh, yeah. that's how the internet is. That's what, people, that's what makes people yeah. buy stuff, didn't you know? Yeah, cool acronyms. Um, the problem with, with, with low power variable optics or uh, whatever you want to call them is not the power of the optic itself. The problem is the reticles that they put in them. And if you if you never have to deal with wind, and, and here's the deal, the reason that these are so popular is because they're used by people who shoot, who play gun games, right? And when they're playing gun games, they're shooting targets at 50, 100, 150, 200, and maybe 300 yards for a long shot. And the truth is, if you're in the on the East Coast, east of the Mississippi, and there's no wind, then it then it doesn't matter. You know, if you're trying to shoot long distance and you need to dope wind, these these kind of radicals here, uh, es no bueno, es no bueno. So if you're gonna shoot, and here's the crazy thing: is like if you're gonna shoot close, like well, if I'm shooting close, then why am I using a magnified optic? Well, I mean relative 
relatively speaking. If you want to play games with guns, and that's your bag, and that's your thing, you're a gun game player, and you need a low-power variable optic to play your favorite gun game, well, Brownells has you hooked up, because I can tell you what, the comparable one from Loophole is about a grand. Did you see the, op- I mean, the reticle? Yeah, yeah. It's funny, because the mouse... It goes perfectly. It fits perfectly. It fits in perfectly in as a crosshair. It's like, huh? It's like, wow, that would be cool if they did that. Yeah. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. What I'm here to talk about is the ARMED project, also known as ARMED. Um, so the ARMED project, after Jared and well, Jared and the family went on a little sojourn. And it's none of your business where they went, but they did. That's right. And now they're back. Yeah, you don't need to know. So while they were on the sojourn, Zachary and I, and we talked about this last Wednesday, we took the Armed because I finally got all the pieces parts. I got the pieces from Brownells. I got the pieces from Magpul. I had the pieces that I already possessed. Uh, put them all together. I was like, well, we need to test it out. So I went out and we did some testing. And I zeroed the optic, and everything was running great. Then I went over to the pickup truck, and I had the Armed rifle, and I had uh, an XM-177 or the BRN-177. Had that, and somehow, I well, we took pictures. We needed to take pictures of pieces and parts and so forth. So what I did was I disassembled the upper. Uh, where I, just, I took the upper off the lower, and we did pictures and blah, blah, blah. Put them back together, and I started having problems. And we talked about this. We talked about how uh, yeah, yeah, I guess so. Uh, We talked about how we had I had swapped the upper and the lower between the the other gun and I didn't have any problems. I'm like, what in the world is going on? And I even called my friend Zach Hall from uh, Atlas Defense, who's a gunsmith and an engineer. And I said, bro, I don't know what's going on, right? And I explained the the problem to him. He goes, well, it sounds like either a gas problem. Uh, He goes, check your gas key. I'm like, no, the gas key's staked. It's a staked gas key. It's it's good. And he's like, okay, well, that's fixed it. And he goes, well, maybe this, maybe that. And so after I got off the phone with him, I actually went over to the workbench and I completely disassembled the arm in and I had it. I mean, well, you don't know, field stripped it, took it apart and I got all the parts laying there and I looked down and I had this epiphany and I'm like, all right, so on an AR, you have a pivot pin mm-hmm. and a takedown pin. Mm-hmm. The pivot pin is up front. Mm-hmm. The takedown pin is in the back. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, When you assemble a standard AR-15 lower, once you've installed the pivot pin and once you've installed the takedown pin, they're captivated. They don't come out. I mean, well, you can pull them out, but when you draw them out, they stop. They don't come all the way out of the gun. Now, the way the the guys at KE Arms, with the way they built that is they have essentially... It's like an HK pin. It's not an HK pin, but it's very similar to an HK pin. Uh, which has a little detent ball, and you can pull it all the way out. Yeah. Right? You pull them all the way out, put the thing in, stick them all the way back. Well, I'm looking at them on the bench, and I, I realized, I'm like, oh, yeah, they're not the same length. Mm-hmm. The takedown pin is about, what, an eighth of an yeah, inch shorter yeah. than the pivot pin. Which is the same way a regular AR is, right? But the thing is, once you've installed those, you never think about it again. They don't ever come out. They just stay in place. So I, I, I thought, oh, man. So I took the lower, and I put the short pin in the front. And I realized that if you put the short pin in the front, it doesn't lock. Mm-hmm. It doesn't come out all the way, and it doesn't lock in place. And you can put the, the other pin in, and it locks perfectly fine. So I thought, okay, if this is the case... Mm-hmm. I'm really going to feel like a tard. So what I did was I made sure that everything was put together correctly. Mm-hmm. And I drove over to the local indoor gun range because I didn't want to drive all the way out in the desert again. Cause yeah. that's like an hour and a half round trip or two hour round trip. So I drove over to the local range and I plunked down my 15 bucks to buy some time on the local indoor range. I took 50 rounds of black Hill ammo, black Hills ammunition four brand new mags 
I loaded them all up. I even I spread the ammo out between the mags so that I could change mags when because at first Zach's like he goes sounds like a bad mag. I said yeah I thought that too, but I rotated through four different magazines and it did the same thing with all of them. And he's like oh well it's not the bag then. I'm like unless I got four bad mags. Um, so guess what? I, it took me all of fifteen minutes to run through fifty rounds through four magazines. Not one single stoppage. There you go. So. It's funny how when. The lesson learned is. And and see that the funny the funny thing is when I used the Cav arms rifle way back when uh, in 2006, when I took fighting rifle with James and he loaned me a Cav arms rifle, I didn't disassemble it. I didn't take it apart and fart with it or anything. Why well, you didn't clean it? James was like, no, just give it back to me. And I was like, yeah. So I never disassembled it. It was never a thing. So this is something new. So it is, I mean, because the pins look, if you just like throw them down, they look identical unless you put them next to each other and you're like, oh, the one pin is an eighth of an inch shorter. And so what the, and I called Zach on the phone. I was like, dude, after, after I successfully ran the test and everything went fine. Like, I was thinking too I, high level here. I called him on the phone and I was like, are you sitting down? Because, and I said, cause you're going to be laughing at me. He's like, what? I, he goes, I am sitting down. And what? Um, he said, yeah. He said, what would happen if you did that is the pin would back out and you would have a tiny, a tiny bit of flex between the upper and the lower receiver. Well, if you have that, you have that flex or that that little gap movement and what would happen is i would i would i i put it together i fired one round two round boom boom nothing yep so what was happening is the pin was it was holding enough it was holding by friction yeah but then when it recoiled when it it would back out and then it would create a gap between the upper and lower receiver and that was just enough of a gap for the bolt not to grab yeah around and load mm. so uh, learning all kinds of things my my and i'm gonna total i'm gonna this is a learning point right and so how, how do we learn we learn from our mistakes and we learn from the mistakes of other people <laughs> so the mistakes of other people would be me don't or do make sure that if you have a KE arms over and see, and as I was talking to Zach, I said, I said, I hate to, you know, I hate this is going on because I know people are like, that's why you should never buy that. That's garbage and, and it's junk and you should never buy that. And I'm like, oh man. It's not the device's fault. No. And see, what I couldn't figure out is when I swapped the other, the upper with the lower, I put it down there, ran just fine. And I swapped the other lower with the upper, you know, I put the brand new upper that I built on a, on a, Brownells lower and it fine ran. I was like, what the what? So yeah, super well, simple. Yeah, stick the, the right uh, the right pins in the right holes and uh you'll be you should be okay. <laughs> That's funny. So there you go. Everything else ran fine. The uh the flash hider compensator uh you know uh ran fine. The uh, I I threw a, a Bushnell one of their black rifle optics or I think they call it black rifle. AR, AR optic. Threw that on there just fine, no problem. The uh, the unobtainium upper receiver from DPMS from 15 years ago, ran just worked just fine. Everything was fine. Um, so there you go. There I you go. I think differently about the like you said that people would would um, say that that's why you don't buy that thing because it's a piece of junk or whatever mm. because of that issue. I think that it's I think a little bit differently myself because i like to know and understand things in the way that they work and what that did is it gave us an opportunity to to learn something that we hadn't been able to learn before oh, because yeah. it was a unique issue yeah and, something but now if that happens again that's going to be part of the debugging process it's like okay we're, instead of starting at a higher level let's just check the pins first did you and, did you unplug did you, it did you turn unplug it off it? and plug it back yeah in? yeah is your rifle plugged in yeah look behind the desk and make sure your rifle's plugged in okay because like with with all your experience with this stuff it's you you go directly to okay 
Yeah, I'm thinking the higher I'm, level problem. I'm, problems, I'm, I'm right? checking the gas tube. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in there. I'm like making sure the gas tube is staked properly. I'm checking the gas key to make sure it's yeah. staked down. And I'm like, what? The? You know, and, 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 Zach, and Zach's like, he goes, well, maybe, you know, get a different bolt carrier, swap the bolt carrier out and see if it runs with that bolt carrier. Yeah. You know, we're like way up here. Yeah. <laughs> we're way up here diagnosing stuff. And it's, and it's actually, well, it's right down here. Yeah. It's like, just put the right pins in the right holes and it'll <laughs> work. So there you go. Lesson learned. So we're moving forward with the, the Armed project. Yes, indeed. 